Hi everyone, so I'm just about to stop filming and I see that this is in the background so that needs removing pronto. It's my J pillow, it's my travel pillow. Why am I talking to you about this? I have no idea but all I can say is it's the best pillow ever. Seriously, I can sleep anywhere with this bad boy. Anyway, um, I was, another question, another thought I had is how many stripy tops can I literally wear? Turns out I have way too many so here's another stripy top. Um, which according to my boyfriend looks the same as all my other striped tops, but I beg to differ. Anyway, enough waffling, we're going to do some biology and I'm going to be talking to you about genes and Punnett squares and all those horrendously long words that teachers throw around a lot and you may or may not understand. So, first of all, when we're talking about the topic of genes, we need to look at where we're talking about inside the cell, and that's inside the nucleus. Remember, the nucleus contains all the genetic information, and it, this genetic information is locked up in structures called chromosomes. Um, now inside those chromosomes you have DNA and that's definitely a topic for another video because I could talk about DNA all day but I don't want to make it confusing and I really only want to look at genes and planet squares in today's video. So remember, DNA is the genetic information and it controls all our features and whether we're intelligent or not, how we look. So it's a very important molecule. So a gene is a section of DNA which codes for a particular protein. And that's our definition which you need to learn. Right, okay. But remember with genes, we have the word allele. Some people might say allele, I say allele. And an allele is a different form of the same gene. So to put that into context, it's something like your eye colour. The alleles for eye colour could be blue, could be green, could be grey, could be brown. Okay, however, if you look around in the everyday population, you'll find that most people out there really have brown coloured eyes. And that's because the allele for brown eye colour is dominant. Right, to introduce another tricky word, we're going to talk about the word phenotype. Now, phenotype is the physical um, appearance of the gene. So, for example, in my case, it would be brown eyes. However, I don't know if I have two of the same alleles or two different alleles and that's because brown is dominant. So what that means is that my genotype and what a genotype is, that's the genes you have inside you, so the actual genes that you contain, my alleles could be big B, little b and I'd still have brown eyes even though I have one allele for brown eyes and one allele for blue eyes or it could be two big Bs and then that would mean that I was homozygous because what homozygous means is that you have two copies of the same allele. So that could be big B, big B, brown eyes. However, if I'm heterozygous, that would mean I'd have one copy of brown, one copy of blue. So that's big B, little b. However, I would be heterozygous, but I'd still be brown eyed because brown is dominant over blue. Sorry, that does sound quite tricky. I'm, I'm thinking that as I'm saying it. Now, where does the big B and the little b come from? We just use letters to, uh, to assign alleles, basically, so we know what we're talking about. So if you're talking about an allele, you're going to give a little letter. Now you can pick whichever letters you want, but people tend to pick letters where there's a real differentiation, a real difference between the capitalization and the small lettering, like B. Um, letters like C are quite tricky, because big C's and little C's look very similar, the same with S's. However, letters like D and T, they're good letters to choose. So, let's run over those definitions quickly again. So a gene is a section of DNA which codes for a particular protein. An allele is a form of a gene. In a homozygous individual, you have two copies of the same allele, e.g. little b, little b. In that case, you might have um, blue eyes. Heterozygous it means you have two different alleles for a particular features. So it could be big b, little b. So that could be brown eyes, blue eyes. But in actual fact, you'll have brown eyes because remember, the brown is dominant. So a dominant allele is one which you see which is exhibited even with only one copy. So you only need one copy of the gene, you don't need two. However, recessive, you need two copies of the gene in order for you to see that feature. So a recessive feature could be blonde hair, because again, if you look out there in everyday, well, in everyday life, you'll see far more people have brown hair compared with blonde hair, and that tells us that brown is dominant over blonde. Now you'll hear things, you might be wondering, what about green eyes, what about ginger hair? These are things which are more complicated and it's not something you need to worry about for your GCSE. But now we're going to have a look at actually drawing Punnett squares because a Punnett square or a genetic cross diagram is a way of seeing what sort of features an offspring will have when two parents come together, okay? And you can work out the likelihood of the offspring being blue-eyed, brown-eyed, 
blonde hair, okay? So that's why we use genetic cross diagrams and I'm going to show you a really easy way of using them. Right, so let's have a quick look at the question that I'm going to have a go at answering with you. A homozygous blue-eyed mother and a heterozygous brown-eyed father want a baby, draw a genetic cross and find out the percentage likelihood of having a blue-eyed baby. So there's the question. Um, let's see how I can set up this camera. I'm finding it really tricky. I know I should use a tablet, but the tablet I bought was terrible. Right, I hope my hand doesn't get in the way. Okay, so there's a really simple way of doing this and it's really important that you follow the same steps and then the answer will just plop out on your lap and I promise it's really easy. So first of all, write two headings, mother, can you read that, and father. Okay, I write phenotype here on the left hand side. It helps me as well with the understanding. So what's the phenotype? Right, that's the what the mother and father actually have in terms of eye colour. So I'm going to write blue and father brown. Right, genotype. I also, I'm going to pick the letter B because it makes sense. Both of the alleles begin with B. So the genotype for the mother. Now I know automatically that it's going to be small b, small b. And that's because blue is recessive, which means that you need two of the same alleles in order for the feature to be exhibited in the person. So, oh I can hear the cat meowing, can you hear the cat meowing? Anyway, but the fact that it's homozygous also tells me that the letters will be the same. So I'm going to write B, B, and there's the mother's genotype. Right, the father, because they're brown eyed, remember because they're brown they could be big B, little B, or two big Bs. However, heterozygous tells me that the alleles are different, so it's going to be big B, little B. Right, next one is going to be gametes. Right, a gamete is a sex cell, so that's going to be the egg in the mother's case and a sperm in the father's case. Now remember, due to meiosis, now that is definitely another video in needing to be made. Due to meiosis, um, the gametes can either be small b, small b, or big b, little b, and I'll show you what that looks like. These are supposed to be eats, but I've got to let the cat in. She's meowing. Right, in terms of gametes, okay, so remember in meiosis, you have to halve the genetic information in either the egg or the sperm, so that when the sperm and egg meet at fertilisation, you have a full set of genetic information, but not double, because otherwise you'd end up doubling the amount of genes and DNA you had, which would be crazy. So in the mother's case, her eggs can either be small b or b, so i.e. that they've all got to be small b. However, in the father's case, the sperm can either be a big b or a little b, and it depends due to meiosis, which allele was fed into that sperm. Which means, when we're drawing our genetic cross, I'm going to draw that now, I'm going to write father here. Oh, I've spelt it wrong, no! Mother here. That's still on camera, just about. Here's our Punnett square, our genetic cross. And then you just have to cross them. So this one is this, this is this. Um, as you can see, these are the same, so I didn't actually need to draw the second line in the Punnett square, but I wanted to keep it nice and straightforward. So if we look, we can see that this person will be brown eyed, it's good to write it so you know what's going on. This person will be blue, this child will be brown again, and this one will be blue. So, the point is that when these, this mother and father have a baby, 50%, because half of them, will be blue-eyed, and that's a probability, and 50% will be brown-eyed. So now I've answered the question because it was, what is the percentage likelihood of having a blue-eyed baby? And the answer is 50%. Um, you can write it as a ratio, which is one to one, or you can say half of them will have um, blue eyes. So I hope that was... Let me just zoom out so you can see that. So yes, 50% will be blue eyed, 50% will be brown eyed, and that's a one to one ratio. Let's have a look at a different example. Right, here's my cat. Kitten! It's not big thing. Lyra! Lyra! Okay, she doesn't care, like all cats. Right, here's another question. Cystic fibrosis is a recessive disease. A carry mother and an unaffected homozygous father want a baby. What is the percentage likelihood, have I spelled that right, of the baby having cystic fibrosis? Right, so what can I learn from the question? So cystic fibrosis is a recessive disease. Right, that tells me I'm going to pick 
F. Oh no, that's too similar. I'm going to pick D as my letters of choice because the upper and lower cases are different. So, because cystic fibrosis is a recessive disease, that tells me that in order to get cystic fibrosis, you need these alleles. So you need this genotype, little d, little d. That's because if you have either of these combinations, you won't have the disease because you'll have a dominant allele which is healthy, which overrides the recessive diseased allele. Okay, does that make sense? So we know automatically that in order to have the disease, you need to have this genotype. Right, so what do we know? We know that the mother is a carrier. That tells us that she has this genotype. Why? Because if she had this genotype, she'd be completely normal and she wouldn't have any hint of the cystic fibrosis disease. And if she had this genotype, kiss and stop rubbing yourself, then she would have the disease. So automatically a carrier is heterozygous. It has two different alleles and we know it's this one. Okay, so let's look at the father, the homozygous father. Right, again, homozygous, definitely not this one because this one's heterozygous. It's definitely not this um, genotype because we would know that the father would have the disease. Therefore, the father's genotype is this one. So I'm going to go through the same stages as before. So mother, father. Okay, phenotype, remember that's the feature, whether they have it or not. So mother is, I'm going to say, carrier. You could have written unaffected. And the father is unaffected or disease-free. Oh, I can't write with Sharpies. Okay, genotype we just discussed. Mother's a carrier. That means she's heterozygous. That means that she is this. Father is unaffected. That means he is this. Because if he was two small d's, he would have the disease. Our gametes. So this mother's eggs could either be this or this. And the father can only actually be this because his two alleles are the same. Okay, so let's draw the cross. Mother, it doesn't matter which way around you draw the mother and the father. Big D, little D, let's turn it into a table. Father is all big D, here's our sperm again. Right, so this person is homozygous, this child is homozygous, this child is heterozygous. However, because we have two big Ds, then we know that they're healthy. And then big D, little D, then they're healthy, but they're also a carrier. Which is basically the same thing. Um, because we have no little Ds, little D, little D, then there is a 0% chance of having CF. There's one other thing I wanted to mention quickly, and that's exam technique. Um, first of all, make sure you're hot on all the definitions. There's often questions asking you for exact definitions of things. But also make sure you understand what the question's asking. If it goes, what is the phenotype of such and such? What you need to write then is a feature. So depending on the question, the answer would be blonde hair, or blue eyes, or tall pea plants, or short ones, or yellow flowers, okay? So it's physical feature that you can describe. If the question asks you for the genotype, it means it wants you to write two letters. And you'll have worked that out using a genetic cross diagram or from the information in the question. So if it goes, what is the genotype? You're gonna write something like big B, little b, or two little b's. Make sure you write down two alleles though, not one, otherwise it's wrong. Um, if the question says something like a heterozygous father, that automatically tells you you need two different letters, so it could be capital B, little b, okay?